This podcast contains some magical adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And sorry, Mom. Welcome to Ratcastle, a progressive chat about Disney magic without the pixie dust. I'm Victoria, and with me today are Nathan. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Nathan. Uh, Sara. Hi. And Janine. Hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. It's so lovely to be speaking with you once again. So I think we're just going to hop right into it, and I think Nathan's just going to go ahead and get us started with news about the Disney theme park. Yeah, so to begin with, of course, Dave is not with us today. Um, Dave and I uh, spent some time um, this last week. I don't know what day it is anymore. Now that I'm on summer break, it's all bleeding. Uh, it's Friday today. We're taping on Friday. So it was this week. He was in town for a recording of the annual Pass podcast. So if you listen to that or if you were at the show and you're listening to this episode because you heard us on the annual pod, uh, annu- the, bleh, the annual Pass podcast, Welcome. We're happy to have you. The uh, so yeah, we we hung out for a couple days. It was a blast. Uh, we got insomnia cookies at like one a.m. in the middle of downtown Orlando. It was super sketch, but it, uh, it was fun. We got Taco Bell Cantina. So Baja Blast so with good. booze. Ooh, how was that? Uh, it was good. It was good. Okay, I've had the like hard Mountain Dew canned beverages. Oh, yeah. you've oh, ventured right. forth into oh, my, those. My boyfriend went on like a mission across the city of Tampa to find them when they first launched. <laughs> Did you kinda... see the flaming Hot version of the Mountain Dew? I'm intrigued. I've heard it's Me not too. good. Y'all gross. I, <laughs> I had the, the everything bagel ice cream from Jenny's. Like I, 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 I tried That's it. interesting. That's I love weird. a I love a weird coffee. Like I have a blueberry muffin Dunkin' Donuts coffee right now. Okay. Like I like hmm. weird coffees. I might but... have you beat them. I've tried Old Bay hot chocolate. Ooh. What? Okay, you've beaten us. Old Bay cho- Old Bay hot chocolate would do it. That would it's do it. Good. There's something something else with Old Bay recently came out. I can't remember what it oh, is. Oh, goldfish. Goldfish. That's right. Wow, I've never That's had right. Old Bay. Yeah. <gasps> like yeah. not in fish, like at all. I don't eat meat, so. Victoria, oh, are yeah. you <laughs> are you upset just because you like Old Bay, or is it like is it a real sting to to overall black culture that she has never tried Old Bay? Old Bay. And she's also from Maryland. <laughs> That's yeah, true. I'm also from Maryland. <laughs> it's a bit of both. It's, it's a bit of both. The black oh, community's outraged. Yeah. At Janine, <laughs> it's over. I excuse her because she doesn't. She it, it goes on meat usually, so yeah. yeah. That's yeah. True. Yep. So welcome to Rat Castle. This is a podcast about food, um, <laughs> weird, and all sorts of different things. Anyway, um, so we hung out. It was great. We had a wonderful time. Uh, annual pass was uh, it was a great time meeting those guys. We rode Cosmic Rewind with Jack uh, and his producer, producer Ben and Katie, um, and um, they were wonderful. And because we knew Dave couldn't be here tonight because he was going to be on a flight, we recorded a little something, something, uh, some thoughts afterwards. Uh, in the car on the way to Disney Springs because we were going to get some drinks at Jock Lindsay's. So um, I'm just going to hand it over to Dave um, and uh, you can listen to our, our commentary on Cosmic Rewind. All right. So we... Uh, hang on, are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> Is this thing on? Uh, so um, we just came off of two consecutive rides yes uh on the new guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind we did and you're, you're you did two this has been my fourth okay so i've had two out before this yeah we and we lucked out this is uh due to some friends at imagineering who called in a last minute assist for me and came through with flying colors the staff there was really nice and just let us right in and uh uh, and it was pouring rain. It was pouring rain when we went in. So we literally were in the queue yeah. like wet rats. Um, classic it, Florida weather. Classic. Like just, just pissing down rain. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, uh, it did go down for a bit. We were standing there yeah. in, the, in the queue for about an hour. But we were inside at least. Yeah. Um, and it did the same with me. 
uh, when I went on it uh, during AP previews right. for about the same length. So they're they're working some stuff out. When it works, it works well. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty quick. But yeah, and working, it's working the bugs out. Extremely high capacity. Like the line, once it's moving, the line moves really well. But, it does. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny when I was telling Nathan after the first ride, there were things that I assumed about this ride when it was first announced. Um, I had sort of predicted, oh, I think I know what they're doing. The minute they announced that the coaster cars index, not spin, but can index and in face particular ways, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, they're going to do the projection gags like they did in Pirate Shanghai, where they match the movement of the coaster, It's but at speed rather than a slow-moving boat. And that's kind of what it is. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's not quite at the um, level of depth shift squinching that Pirates is because it's very convincing that it's real, but you're moving so slow that you can take in that depth yes. d- detail. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's needed here, but it it is the next generation Space Mountain. Like, I love you, Space Mountain, but I have a new bay. Oh, 100%. I rode Space Mountain after riding this, uh, and to quote Tobey Maguire in the Spider-Man movies, my back, my back. <laughs> um, it, there's no... There's no comparison once you ride this you're just like and it's something i said on twitter which is you know they're redoing they're gutting completely tokyo and redoing it there's just absolutely no way this is not the right system they're going to use i yeah i bet you it is you're probably right because it absolutely feels like the heir apparent in terms of i mean take the guardians franchise away from it you have a beautiful coaster that is a convincing um cinematic ride through space like that's what it is and and it and it's you know the Guardians theme adds a, a little bit of story, which is ridiculous, um, and <laughs> and obviously the humor. And the, yeah. I, I think James the good. The, James again captured that. Um, and then of course the the music of the series. We had two songs. We got um, first we had uh, Gloria Estefan Conga, and I, I must say I did not know I needed Miami Sound Machine in space, but now we have it, and I'm I, happy it exists. I'm always glad when my loves of the Birdcage and Guardians of the Galaxy come together. <laughs> Come on, Gloria. So, um, my Guatemalaness. My Guatemalaness. Uh, so then, uh, the second one we got was Earth, Wind, and Fires September, which is a jam. Yeah. Um, what are the other songs? Uh, I ran. Um, oh, Flock of Seagulls. Uh, there is uh, the ever appropriate Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Tears for Fears, um, nice. I had I Ran. I, I did I Ran the first time. And it's slower. It feels like the ride's slower. Oh. It, it gives it a different vibe. It's right. more chill. Because um, that song just isn't very uh, up. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is also the one My White Whale is still Disco Inferno. So oh, okay. Disco Inferno and then September, as you said, in Congo. I think those are the. I may be missing one, but I think those are it. I okay. Think there's five or six. So yeah. very rewritable. Um, you know, I I, I I was nerding out not just about the technology and the ride on display and the sort of fun that it's and it's the right kind of Disney thrill. It's not too intense. Mm-hmm. People, anybody who's worried that you're like spinning uncontrollably, that's not what's happening. It's not a mouse coaster. It's not a mouse coaster at all. But it's also like it it it's no more uh, intense than Space Mountain is. If you can do Space Mountain, you can do this. Because yeah. speed-wise, it's probably very much very similar. I bet this thing doesn't go over 30 or 40 miles an hour. I think 35 is what I've been hearing. Yeah, so it's it's pretty tame. But it's the, tw- it's the turns and the fact that some of those turns you're not facing forward like you do in Space Mountain. You're facing inward to the turn, so you're sort of drifting around corners, which right. is a fantastically cool um, physical feeling. Yes. But but one of the things I nerded out, and this is just because I'm a nerd, it is <laughs> the, the the queue is gorgeous, and the materials and the and the industrial design and the scenic design of everything of the both the Zendarian sort of exhibit and then up on the ship when you get um, brought up to it, it's it's all really pretty. But one of the best details, and I complimented my friend at WDI who got us in. I texted him this that the use of acoustic materials mm-hmm. that were not an afterthought. Yeah. It made me so happy because often they are an afterthought and they realize too late, oh, it's going to be too noisy in here. We have too much clapback or whatever. And so they slap on acoustic things. This was not that. This was let us make sure we pick scenic uh, layers and scenic 
um, coverings and and wall coverings and 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 modular wall solutions yep. that are acoustic in nature, which there are plenty of out there, and they made it look beautiful. And it, like, um, no one's going to notice it but me. But if you are <laughs> if you are a designer of any stripe, if, if you're an architect especially, you will go through this and be very impressed at how they integrated. Um, that into the scenic it's really seamless and it and it, you notice it like the queue is actually really it's there's energy and noise because it's full of people but it's also not um you know tinny and and it and fatiguing the thing about uh, yeah the thing about acoustics is it can get very um fatiguing if you uh oh there's one right here oh nice we're gonna we're, 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 we'll cut this we're par we're literally driving the car we are parking at disney springs to go have some cocktails with friends so um yeah, acoustics are tricky because they can be very fatiguing in an indoor space if they're there too long, but they, they really nailed it. So I very much appreciate that detail. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful ride. Um, I, I kind of joked with you uh, that, you know, it's my favorite Tomorrowland ride. <laughs> um, and I think it would be, it's it's beautifully Tomorrowland. Um, again, that's I don't hate that it's in Epcot. I really don't. I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, I think uh, having some sort of post room, much like Mission Space, that kind would help. Of, yeah. layers in some more of the they discuss a little bit in the queue yeah. kind of our connections yeah um which we didn't get to experience with you because we we went through the lightning, lightning lane, lane yeah and kind of uh, you yeah because we are we are people who know people um <laughs> but uh at the same time i think that's the key is is i think a little more of that would have helped but in the end it's it's a lot of fun. It's and, super fun. Yeah. So rewritable. Really wide audience demographic. 100%. You know, there's enough. Like, the, I, I, was, I was on the fence about the fan service in terms of other attractions and things. What I saw, at least in the Lightning Lane mm -hmm. version, there's very limited amount. But it was there. Yeah. And it was fine. It was cute. And, and you know, there's a kind of a, a little bit of science in the story. Enough to sort of, you know fit it into epcot i i it think is, it's it is the third ride in that building to talk about the big bang yeah so right. i mean there's some tissue but if i were to pick that apart at all i, I would agree with you nathan that the, that if it had a post show yeah. that had any actual you know space travel um black holes uh, string theory you yeah. know like uh, i would have that would have been a nice touch and i think it would have solidified it a little bit more but it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb it it, it no. works it's really fun and it's the kind of thrill ride this park really needed yeah I, I agree i think um this is the kind of thing that once you take out a moving theater you worry <laughs> that that okay well where are we going to get capacity and oh, you know but it's a people eater it's a people eater and remy's new and is not a replacement because what they've been doing is all these replacements so i think once play pavilion opens epcot's gonna be a really breezy park to sort of go yeah, and do agreed agreed there'll be a lot of options yeah this is less capacity than 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 the moving theater I mean, before how, could it, not how be? could it not be but but it but it for what it is for right. a for a thrill ride of that caliber the fact that it gets two thousand an hour or more is yeah. ridiculously but, good uh, yeah and, and you know something we talked about in the queue which is like of course, the moving. Uh, of course, Ellen could eat people up, but Ellen hadn't ate people up for, for five a long, years for a long like, time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always been a uh, yeah. like a third of the theater yeah. at most. So oh. this will always have a crowd, and this will always eat people up. So that'll help. We also had a meal at um, Connections. I, bought, I had a little snack at Connections. You did have a little snack, at Connections. and it was really nice. Yeah. Um. The the, the it, it is for again. This is a designer thing, and maybe fans are so desperate for there to be a theme to Epcot and Future World that that's what they miss. And I understand that. Um, at the same token, I look at that, and like we talked about, it looks like any sort of tech startup um, you know, yeah. lunch cafeteria. And I don't mean that as a negative criticism. It looks like a futuristic creative space and, yeah. and, and it, and it, and it's the, the fixtures and the finishes, it's all extremely high end. I never would have said, uh, cause I waited a little while. You had some trouble at the airport yeah. and, and, uh, I was waiting for you to get to Epcot. I never would have said, well, I'm going to go hang out in electric umbrella for an hour. Where you like, could totally hang out here. You can hundred percent. The, the windows sit. alone, the windows out to outside the light, um, the the vault of the the, the space that it's this huge space, yeah. um, and the fact that it can get the capacity it does. I mean, we were there at peak capacity, 100%. right? The play, every seat was full. Well, and because it was raining, so it was pouring outside, and so yeah. we were, there were people that weren't even there for anything. So but it, it didn't peak. peak yeah. But it didn't take me long to get a meal. Like the lines nope. were not very long at all, nope. and so it's extremely high capacity. I, 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 it's you know, 
and as we said on the show before, it's exactly the the thing that Future World has always needed, mm -hmm. which is more food and a place to keep it active at night. And yeah. so this light spilling out of that building, as we walked af after the ride, we walked out of the park, the energy walking by there and by the connect the connections or whatever creation store is like it's it's a it's a kineticism that Future World never had. No. And, no, yeah, and, and it's, it's so great. I think it's, I think it's a step in the right direction in terms of making future world or whatever it's called now. Um, <laughs> a, a, yeah. It's a place that will have more people in it later in the day. Cause it used to empty out. You uh, had concerns about acoustics in those areas. And they're great. Same yeah. thing there. Same thing there that I noticed in the guardians queue. Um, they really integrated acoustic into material choices and, and finishes as much as they could. Um, it felt like a very energetic restaurant. It's not yeah. quiet. It's not where you go no. for a date, but it's it's not unpleasant. It is it is hangout a bowl, yeah. you know. It, it uh, really is. Yeah. It really is. I I could grab a coffee there in the morning and chill out. Um, I yeah. was really surprised. Yeah. It's it's and that was yeah at peak when when in the mornings when they're not really running the the cafe side there's the Starbucks side it's really empty in there yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's lots of beauty and the mural's gorgeous and yeah I just I love it I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoyed it yeah very much so so uh, yeah well thanks thanks Dave for yeah your appearance we of course you. Yeah, thank you um, for joining me and now we're gonna go get drinks and Nathan why don't you just take it back over. Well, thank you, Nathan, for that amazing commentary on uh, Cosmic Rewind. Um, I can tell you from the future, uh, you still agree with your own opinions. Let's see here. What else was happening? Disney World. We're talking Disney World. So let's talk just really, really quickly. I'm so, so sick of talking about DeSantis. Um, I literally cannot. Cannot. I literally cannot. Um so DeSantis wants to, the state of Florida to take over Reedy Creek improvement districts rather than the local governments. So his new thing now is he signed this thing where, uh, of course, he wants to dissolve Reedy Creek by June 1st, 2023. Uh, and everyone's frustrated because, of course, there's like two billion in debt that Reedy Creek currently has. And, of course, all of that debt would go to Orange and Osceola counties uh, if they dissolve Reedy Creek. Uh, and of course that does not look good when you're facing reelection this fall. Uh, and so DeSantis said, I'd much rather have the state leading that effort than potentially having local government. I'm worried that they would use that as a pretext to raise taxes on people, uh, when that's what they would want to do anyways, and then try to blame Reedy Creek. So he's blaming, uh, uh he's blaming Osceola and Orange counties for wanting to raise taxes already and now they're going to use that reedy creek thing to raise taxes uh like it's a sneaky sneak this is so confusing like it, at this point it's just ridiculous well it comes down to this dumb man who wants to be president does dumb thing for dumb voters dumb thing of course is not going to work and is dumb so said thing won't actually occur but dumb man must act like it will that's basically <laughs> where we're at still um <laughs> That made sense. One thing that came yeah. out of this, though, last time we talked, I believe we talked, there was, a, there was a, a group of taxpayers in Osceola County that had sued DeSantis uh, for this Reedy Creek thing, saying you're going to, of course, put a bunch of money on top of us, uh, a lot of debt. Uh, this is ridiculous. Um, well, a federal judge, of course, as sort of a side note to this, has dismissed that case against Governor Ron DeSantis, which makes you go, Rrr, but really it kind of makes a lot of sense. The lawsuit alleged, of course, that um, this would uh, violate the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, and the uh, judge basically dismissed it because he's like, well, this doesn't even take effect till 2023, and the federal court does not have jurisdiction over state issues. So, like, it was just wrong court, wrong time. Like, Oh, my God. Did they even have representation? I'm, who filed that? You know, you, you know, it doesn't take long driving down Florida to realize there's plenty of lawyers that will file anything for a little publicity. So, that's true. Um, so that's that. That's our little Reedy Creek segment. Let's talk about something a little more positive uh, going on. I like this. Have you ever wondered how much money is in the fountains at Walt Disney World? Well, if you have, the grand total recently has been around $30,000. Uh, because Walt Disney World has donated 30000 to Give Kids the World uh, Village, 
um, which uh, if you don't know Give, uh, Give Kids the World, they're a really amazing organization down here in Orlando. They have a huge complex, and it's all themed. Imagineers have given their time. Other people have given their time to make this a beautiful themed area. And people who have critical illnesses, uh, other things of that nature come down and stay, and they can stay for free uh, at the resort. They do all of the holidays. So if they're there for a week, they do every night is a different holiday because it's like you get to celebrate the holidays. You didn't get to celebrate when you were in the hospital and you get ice cream as much as you want because they have an, <laughs> a, an ice cream bar um, and there's pools and mini golf and all sorts of stuff. And then during Christmas, they do an amazing light display, which also uh, is a fundraiser for Give Kids the World. Uh, and then, of course, Universal and Disney have partnered with them, and they give them free tickets. So the kids get to hang out at an awesome place made for kids, and then they get to go to all these theme parks. So it's it's an amazing organization. Um, if we ever do any sort of uh, fundraiser, which, you know, we got to get some more audience listeners probably to do that. But once we get there, we'll do a fundraiser for Give Kids the World because they're amazing. They've been there since 86. Um, and it's just – it's. It's exactly the kind of niche thing. So let's see here. They've, uh, they gave them 30,000. That was, uh, from, they say, at least they say from the fountains. So all the waterways and fountains throughout Disney world was collected periodically over the last couple. I don't know if it was years or anything like that. Uh, but then all of that was donated. So that ended up being about 30,000 and, and, um, Walt Disney world has, uh, helped the, the quote from the CEO of good kids, the world. Uh, Pam Lindworth says that uh, Disney's been helping them for about 35 years and they've donated about half a million dollars um, to the village, which is cool. 30,000 I mean, is a big chunk of that then. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. This donation was on top of a recent half a million. Oh, grand. okay. Okay. So they're okay. even more okay. than that. Okay. Sorry, I read that completely. That makes a lot more sense. I was like, $500,000 yeah. over I, the course of 35 years is not anything for Disney. <laughs> I also thought it was weird because they, they of course, um, sponsor a light display at the christmas yeah uh, festival and all sorts yeah. of stuff mm -hmm. this is nothing new they've been hanging out with uh give kids the world since the beginning so um you know so so in, in more along the lines disney has recently given five hundred and thirty thousand dollars yeah <laughs> way there like we go. that there we um, go. that makes a lot more sense wow. <laughs> uh has anyone done anything in kids at kid, give kids the world janine have you ever been down there i was thinking about taking my kid to the christmas light thing last year but we didn't get around to it one of these days, years, I guess. Yeah. They've only recently started doing it. Yeah. Most of those lights, now this could be apocryphal, I don't know. But the the saying is, is Disney donated much of the lights uh, oh, from, from Osborne, from Osborne yeah. to them. So a lot of those lights are reused from Osborne. Um, and I'm sure some of them are. It's it's really impressive. It's a it's you can't say it's a little expensive, but again, it's a charity. You're giving money yeah. to charity, so um, it's 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 a good evening. Um, it's a lot I've of seen fun. like they do like light displays with music and things like mm -hmm. that. It looks it, it looks really cool. Um, yeah, it's legit. It's yeah, and my it was son such is big... really into that. Like he watches the YouTube videos of cool houses. And oh, like he'd that, love it so though. He would. It Aww. it was big enough that they, you have to take a bus to go over there. Oh wow! Um, there's there was parking in a completely different area because there were so many people. Wow! It's a it was a big fundraiser, and I, I, the only issue is they're still running the place at the same time. So there are families in the houses, so they sort of cordon off an area. But if they ever were full, kids come first. Yeah. Um, but I think they'll work it out because it's it is a very much a a, a, a an amazing thing, and um, yeah, very cool. So anyway, going from a very cool thing to a, a very not cool thing. And by not cool thing, I mean kite tails at Animal Kingdom. <laughs> I want it to burn. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Everyone hates kite tails. Well, that's because it sucks, but it sucks in the best sort of way. Oh, it's I crazy, cried. You know, everyone on TikTok <gasps> seems to love it, but everyone on Twitter hates it. I so feel like it's ironic, it's really though. It is it's ironic, ironic love. love. Janine, you need yeah. to talk to me. First of no, all, people actually like it. 
<laughs> really? Janine, I need to make sure you know what Kite Tales is because the idea that you cried at Kite Tales makes me think that maybe you saw you cried at Rivers Kite of Tales? Light okay. or something they else. Have, they have audience interaction where they give the kids like little kites and send That's them true. on like a little parade around. And That's my true. son got picked to be in the parade uh, and I cried. Like, I'm so, Okay. No, yep, All right. I, I get it yep. now. That, that's like a that's a memory and he enjoyed it and so like i don't love kite tales but you like the memory yes and yeah, okay. i enjoyed that he enjoyed it and like that's disney is not always for adults and adults discerning interests sometimes yes. you just have a dumb kite that flies around and it makes your small child happy yeah you know especially when there's nothing there before that's true that's true that's true you Very get to valid you go you get to both make your child happy and bake in the sun exactly all at the same time yes so anyway kite tales the show times have been removed from future performances uh it looks like the 27th there's no show time so it looks like yeah so you get to see it on the 26th would probably be the last day the show's expected basically they're stopping it because they're changing it and the update will um uh have some sort of different focuses they're basically cutting it down they're getting rid of all of the things you liked <laughs> janine um <laughs> and uh it's literally going to be more of like a you know how the boats currently sort of just go about and and there's characters in it mm -hmm. they're going to do the same with these oh seems. so it's going to be like a sort of it's just going to happen yeah okay yeah it's not going to be an event that's uh, dumb because be the best part of it is the fact that it sucks people out of rides correct yeah but I mean, it, it also isn't very reliable is the problem. Uh, I've been there several times where they're like, I was like jazzed for it and everyone's sitting and then they're like, sorry, the winds are too little or too much or whatever. Oh goodness. Because it's a really small lake, like lake to do anything in. Yeah. Um, and they're barely not hitting those trees anyway. So. I, I mean, to be fair, it's hard to do outdoor entertainment in Animal Kingdom. Eerie. totally yeah yeah with that size of a lake it's it's hard enough as it is yeah i don't know i i, I hope if they're going to do something there they need to put actual like shade on those seats it is a scorcher oh yeah i can't imagine just sitting there yeah that's no a lot shade. of wasted space Ugh. so because wasn't it part of the 50th it is just really interesting that they're getting rid of something that they announced is a 50th celebration kind of thing i mean kind of but, but have you seen how this 50th day. is like crash makes a lot of sense has there been a celebration you Did could I miss that? yeah man i don't know all right so let's move on to uh, other great news for people who love to go to disney world which is genie plus um is now oh. uh starting june 8th is only going to be available to purchase on the day you visit disney world via the my disney experience app so currently, of course, it's an add-on to your ticket, and you can add it on before the arrival, and guests who have already purchased it, right? They just kind of come in, and it's good to go. If you've already purchased it, by the way, you're good. Don't worry about it. This doesn't affect Disneyland either. This is just Disney World. Now, you have to purchase it on the day, um, and it's subject to availability. <laughs> cool. Well. So I'm sure you would love to spend thousands of dollars to come down here and hope, fingers crossed, that you get to do what you want to do. Here's the here's the secret. Does everyone want a secret? Let's go to the secret corner. So here's the thing. I've never used it, and I still get to ride all the shit I want. It's not, you don't need it. It's, it's bullshit. It's, it's just bullshit. So don't, so don't buy it. Anyway, so let's, we're going to come back out of the secret corner. Um, but this is what they do. I don't know. I don't know what, what they're making. It so hard for the normal guest, right? Like they really I, are and it's confusing. A, it's obscene. Why they keep changing it. It's already hard enough to understand. And then you change it and make it more confusing. Of course, Disney plus lightning lane. I'm trying to remember how it's going to work with cosmic rewind. It sort of does. I think you can buy it. It doesn't come with it, but Cosmic Rewind you can I buy on top of it. I think it's a lightning link. Yes. But on top of 
But then they added a third time that you can go into the queue, but it's only for people that are staying on property. So people are going to get confused by that. A hundred percent. So you can only what? do it outside. So when Cosmic Rewind opens, you can get virtual queue 7 a.m. anywhere you're at. After that, you have to be in the park to do it. And there's two of them, but only one of them is for resort guests. Oh, okay. How Lightning Lane works with all that, I, I don't even want to say because I'll be both wrong and they'll change it if I'm right. <laughs> so uh, I think you can purchase a Lightning Lane for it, but I don't know how that all works. Okay, but like, let's say, for example, because this is yes. the part that I just think is like ridiculous. So say you're, you're because they opened up at 7am, where right. you can get Genie Plus. So now you have and you're going into like Hollywood Studios, for example, and you're trying to get that boarding pass for um, Rise. Right. So now how well, are there's you no more boarding both? pass for Rise? Rise is just open. Rise is just open? straight regular queue. Yeah. Yeah, it's just regular queue now. So you can so buy then- a lightning lane to Rise. So then how do you buy both? Can you buy both at the same time? No, you have to pick one. Well, I mean, if you're buying the Genie Plus, oh. I think when you're buying it, you can buy the individual extras. At the same time? One would assume. But... <laughs> the thing that I love about this app is that we are hardcore Disney people. And even we can't wrap our heads around this service. Victoria, you're a travel agent. I am. Explain. Ex- <laughs> how do you explain this to a normal human being? Or do you even try anymore? I stopped trying. I I remember someone asked me, which is hilarious because I did just put Disney Duty Plus on someone's package today. And I, but the thing is, it was for Disneyland and it's similar to Max Pass, so they were used to it. So okay. I just said it was like max pass for them and they understood it. However, if it's someone that hasn't been or has never gone, I don't even bother. Yeah. <laughs> it's a waste of money. It really is. Because like, say that you go at the end of the day, you're not getting anything. Like there's yeah. nothing. Honestly, me personally, it's only good for Magic Kingdom. A hundred percent. That's just me personally. No, I totally agree with you. I don't think you need it for Epcot for 98% of Epcot. Of exactly. I mean, maybe Rise. I mean, the problem with Hollywood Studios is they still don't have enough rides. And so all of their e-tickets are always full of people. Even, I mean, they literally just in the last couple of years have opened two new lands and it's still not enough. Um, and, and, but uh, yeah, I mean, maybe that's another example, but Magic Kingdom for sure. Um, is, That's really the only, yeah, the only yeah. one I would say, and that, that would be the only time I would suggest it. But usually, my clients aren't families necessarily; they're just sure. like couples or like friends. So right, like, oh. but now it doesn't even matter because travel agents don't get commission. Like they used to give us commission for when we added it, but now that they do, they only you can't. So I'm like, okay, okay. yeah. So, fun yeah. everyone's having a good time but anyway we we could shit on that app all day long but instead let's talk about something that's i think pretty cool but it's one of those things that's like when uh like your son breaks a vase and and then he like comes home with a new crappier vase but you're like well they're trying i guess so janine <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh how disney is bringing a a homemade vase home <laughs> well, first of all, if you have two children and you have one like more important child and then your other child that you neglect breaks yes. the vase and then they bring home the second vase. That's what's kind of happening here. So oh, okay. this is this is just at Disneyland. Uh Disneyland. That's true. I don't yeah, I think it's only Disneyland. Yeah, currently. it's just Disneyland. So Disneyland has a new 2022 Pride collection. Um, and they're donating 100% of their profits to LGBTQIA, et cetera, organizations. Um, it's uh, a bunch of stuff. It's kind of like I'm just kind of scrolling through and I'm seeing a lot of like, it's the Marvel logo, but rainbow. And, um, <laughs> you know, m- mugs that say pride rainbow, which are actually pretty cool. I like the stripy rainbow. And, um, pretty neat stuff it's it's decent 
decent design. Not my favorite design choices, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm it's pretty cool. Say Target did it better. Have you guys yeah, seen Target? Like, I feel like this designs? is kind of phoned in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I'm glad we, they're okay. donating profits. But don't we want like we're gonna give 105 percent? Like they're not losing anything here. Yeah, they're they're really they're they're no, they're just not making. I mean, especially coming from the whole thing with don't say. Yeah, Bill like they they've got a. It, it... And let me just say, as someone who worked in retail and sold a lot of this stuff, barely anybody buys it. Like it yeah. always ends up in company d which is like the cast member discount store yeah like you'll see a ton of these and then they'll keep them even past june so they'll be there until september right. like this isn't i just don't think it's really much i would have right. rather them just like write a check an yep. actual check 100%. that we could have seen yep. you know open up that disney bag <laughs> um like something um because this is just like uh, it's, it doesn't feel like a lot yeah yeah, I, I don't love it. The The scrunchies are cool. Some of it is all right. There's a button up that's cool. It has little rainbow logos on it. And there's a backpack that's nice. But for the most part, it's just kind of... It's lazy. It, it feels really lazy. It feels uninspired. Yeah, I like, agree. Yeah, here's an ornament that's just... It's Mickey, but just slap rainbow across it. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's just way better design options available versus are you suggesting just... it's performative <laughs> it definitely feels like we're just throwing it out there to say that we did it yeah i don't know well that's my something. take yeah there's so much of it though it just keeps going <laughs> <laughs> okay so sara why don't you get us into our next segment our new segment beware our guests yeah, so we have a brand new segment, um, and it's going to be called Beware Our Guests. And I feel like we're starting off pretty strong for this segment. Um, it is a, a fantastic <laughs> oh inaugural account. Yes. Um, it's a, I'm going to tell you a story, okay, about these, about these two brothers. Two uh, brothers from <laughs> New Jersey. Two yes. brothers. Oh, if only Dave were here. From New yeah. Jersey. I know. I don't know if they're going to be doing New Jersey proud, but I mean, one has it's New Jersey, New Jersey. Um, but anyway, so two brothers, uh, they're going to be, I don't even know if I should say their first name, but the Galant, the Goodell, I think it's the You're Goodell allowed to brothers. Say it. They're literally okay. arrested. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. If you look at their pictures, they look like the type that would do this type of stuff. Um, so it's, what Christian does that mean? And... That's very, I, let's, let's dive into that a little bit. I'm, <laughs> I'm just very like, curious about the prejudice that Sara comes sorry. with. I'm Tell me sorry. I'm your... sorry, but these men just look. If I saw them in the street, I'd walk away. I'd like walk wow. a different. They just look sketch. Like I don't know why. Um, Sara, let's be fair though. If you had a police sketch, you would probably look the same. Like there's no good police photo. <laughs> you know. I feel like who was it? Like the oh, there's always like the hot. What is it like the hot mug shot? Yeah, hot, hot mug villain shots. of the month. There's some good ones. I feel like there's some, these guys just had a bad day. I think. These guys look very hungover. Yes. And yeah. their eyebrows are very separated. I think that's what kind of freaks me out. Uh, okay. Eyebrows are very separated. <laughs> is the comment of the evening? What? The, because it's true. It is really it's true. true. Now that she like, said that, I'm looking at it and looking like, yeah, she's not wrong. That's the like a, eyebrows are kind of just weird. There's but, like a and, full yeah. eyebrow length between the two of them. Right, and it's both of them. Yeah, but... well, they're brothers. You know, that's true. They're they brothers. They have the classic, same eyebrow threader. Classic Goodell brother eyebrow <laughs> space that we it's know from genetic. all our favorite Goodell brothers. Yes. So, um, so these two brothers, they um, got drunk at the UK Pavilion, um, and just kind of how the story goes, they were cut off of the alcohol at about nine p.m. Um, and because they were cut off, they started cursing at cast members. Security was called. Security tells them to get out. They're not having it. So they're just cursing up a storm. That's, this is mainly Christian. So Christian is the one that is causing all these problems. He's like 24, right? He's a little yes. brother. Yes, he he's the youngest brother. Yet. Um, he's 24. <laughs> I know, hold on. I'm 23, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> the brain isn't done cooking. That's true. 
Yeah, it, like I think it's like 25 years old for like the male brain. Yeah, yeah so like basically he gets a pass. pass. He gets a pass. I don't know if he'll get a pass from the sheriff's department. <laughs> no, but no. Um, so they started cursing at cast members. They were escorted out by security. Um, they're walking past a bunch of kids and families and they're just throwing out profanities and doing the most. Um, the OC sheriffs get called by security um, to escort them out. Um, and the Christian he's getting like held back from by like this girl that's a part of his group and this random guy the, these two people are unnamed um he's getting held back from being uh from going back into the park he wants to run back into Epcot and he's just going crazy um and Robert is just he's just constantly apologizing for him um I don't know what happened but anyway so then they're being told to go ahead and catch an Uber and get back to their hotel um to the boardwalk hotel and then once again Christian runs away so they're let off i mean they do a uh, christian they does do a, a lot. lot he does a of lot of cussing yeah and, and yeah. making a scene to to be so, told that just get off property like he was doing a lot it's yeah, surprising it's that he was just told to like get out of here um but once they get back to the boardwalk hotel he's running around this guy runs away from the cops he's just having a full-on high speed hiding chase. behind jelly rolls <laughs> 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 they just he's just doing it all he's he's getting grabbed by the cops and um he's being pulled away he's holding on to the gates um just having a full moment so then he throws the girl the friend onto the ground he pushes her really hard and that's when the police grab him finally they finally arrest him. And then now this is where the brother, Robert, gets involved. And he's just chasing the cops. He's like, where are you taking my brother? Like, leave your brother alone. <laughs> and then he goes back to the hotel and gets arrested. So, yeah, because he comes back. They tell him, yeah. go to the hotel. And then he comes back yeah. and asks where his brother is again. And you're like, you, your brother's, I mean, it's fairly clear where your brother's <laughs> going. <laughs> I have so, some, like, some kind of important context, I think. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, Epcot closed at 9 this night. So they okay. were cut off in the ascents that they were closing. Right. And it was also a Tuesday. Oh. This is not your Saturday night. You know, everybody's out on... This is a Tuesday past closing at Epcot. People a are Tuesday. making their way out it's on a, a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. They're getting turned up on a Tuesday. Um, Tuesday. <laughs> I'm going up on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. The UK pavilion was going up. Um, so yeah, cool. they got arrested. Um, I am I hope they get a trespassing charge or something from so that they can never go back to Disney or that they're banned. Um I'm sure they're uh, banned. This is the second time, apparently, UK siblings not UK, New Jersey siblings have also had a yes. similar situation. Um, so New Jersey and your sibling issue, <laughs> I don't know what's well, going on there. Last time we involved public nudity. So at least this time's a little more rational. Um, <laughs> what is so happening? Jersey, Jersey is bringing their best. It's not even the end. Okay. So we have another one and this is Ethan Hunt, your favorite taxi driver, your favorite illegal taxi driver. Yes. Um, not and this Tom is... Cruise from Mission Impossible, <laughs> Ethan Hunt. Yeah. Not that one. Let's not confuse that one. Um, and this happened on April 6th. So um, Ethan Hunt is an illegal da uh, taxi driver, and he was um, pulling up I like up that to... you say that like it's his official, like on his tax. <laughs> He's an illegal taxi driver. I feel like it driver. should be. I feel like it should be. It should be like something maybe on his... He doesn't have a driver's license, but it should you, be on his next driver's see, license. My job is crazy taxi. That's what I, I am crazy taxi. So, yeah. you know. It should be. Um, so, he, so he pulled up to Disney Springs at 10.30 p.m. Um, in his Ford Crown Victoria. Um, and he had just like a taxi service sign thing up on there. Um, and he got the attention of an off-duty cop because it looked super sketchy. Right. Um, and he is pulled over and is asked for a driver's license. He doesn't have it. He's asked for insurance. He doesn't have it. He's <laughs> asked for some sort of taxi license. He does not have it. 
he has nothing. <laughs> and this is not even the first time that he has been, um, <laughs> like that oh, he has gosh. been doing this That's taxi so thing. That's so scary. It yeah. is really scary. But no, no, it gets worse. It gets worse. Because you pull this guy's record and he has, like going back to 2014, he has two dozen like incidents, like on his like record. Um, oh my. Two, maybe, maybe two car crashes um speeding tickets he is he was going 56 on a 35 mile zone um in downtown orlando he has multiple tickets that are unpaid he was recently back in march uh caught for doing the exact same thing um near the amway center so he has been arrested uh for driving without a license um and doing illegal taxi services i don't know if you guys know this but um I used to be a court reporter That's and true. driving without a license is like 75% of your average misdemeanor docket. It okay. is like the bread and butter of the I'm criminal justice lie. system. I lost mine last year and I was driving without one for like a whole year. Wait, was it like <laughs> suspended? Oh, well. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Sorry, no, are just... you crazy taxiing Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> It was during the pandemic, okay? And, like, the DMV was, like, never open. That's so, like, true. I couldn't go. So, that's like, bad. I, it wasn't that it was suspended. It just, I lost the actual card. Oh, that's not an, you won't get arrested for that. Yeah, yeah. so. You're okay. Technically. You just I'm didn't fine. have the physical document on yeah. it. Exactly. But I got one now, so we're good. By the way, the sign, uh, you can buy a taxi sign on Amazon for $21. Wow. That's probably what he did. What so, an investment. They all look, <laughs> they all are the equivalent of a white van with no windows. Like all of these taxi signs, <laughs> none of them look legitimate. Like they, they all look like, come in here, please. We have candy. Yeah. That was just, like, I wonder how many people he's like actually picked up because apparently he's like a horrible driver. Like he's right. super dangerous. So well, no one's giving him one star on Uber. So you can keep going. Um, but we can go ahead and move on to our final, oh, <laughs> our oh. final story in this segment. If you thought the other two were bad. This is worse. Um, so you have, um, I don't even know how to go about this one because it's so bad. Um, but recently, um, the Stop Anti-Semitism um, Instagram profile posted um these two people like just these two men i believe um waving nazi flags right outside of the walt disney world sign right um and it's just Real absolutely cool. disturbing yeah um it's disgusting to be like i don't, it just i don't know like it, it to see that just makes me feel so like uneasy like that's just yeah. like such a weird feeling to like see nazi flags just like out like that next and it's to, not on disney property it's right outside yeah right yeah so technically they can but it's just we're almost giving them what they want by talking about them here but i i think there was some upset online that people were not speaking up enough about this happening on social media and for me it's kind of like well these are like absolute wackos right and 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 there's two of them and it's a very you know we we use imagery to put points across and imagery is even easier these days to sort of use and and very quickly spread online and nothing's more of a dynamic contrast than literally the nazi flag next to the walt disney world sign right like mm -hmm. that's a very dynamic image dare I say a very clickable image. Um, and I think the majority of what these people want is for kind of what we're doing here, but I think we're not showing the image. So, you know, there's less context, but you know, that's how they're spreading their, their message because if everyone ignored them, then nothing would happen. Right. Because they're just two wacko fascists in front of Disney world. Yeah. Um, I think same here. I think it's really hard because it's like 
there's this weird part of me that kind of wants to like share it and be like, oh, look at all these crazy things that are happening in the world, like with anti-Semitism on the rise, like we need to be more vigilant. And of course we should be. Yeah, We should be, obviously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But then there is like, I think you're absolutely right. And they want this to be shared. Like this is only a few people that's doing this. And then with us sharing it even more and talking more about it, it could it could have that weird effect of increasing that little group because you're saying, oh, well, they're talking more about us. If I want people to notice me, it's if I awareness. want people to talk about me. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, kind of bringing the eyeballs. Like the, I got X number of views on this content that I created. Yeah. This many people saw me. They don't care that it's a hate watch. They're just happy to have that number. Yeah. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah. Victoria, you want to lead us into the next bit? So um, recently, Josh, tomorrow, 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 I think. No, it's not. It's a Mia de Mario. So, (laughs) (laughs) otherwise known to the community as Daddy. Um, (laughs) What? Who's who's saying that? Some people really like him. Some people really like him. Yeah. Oh my god. So um, he stated that the Park Pass reservation system is not going away anytime soon, and Bob Shapex followed that up recently. Uh, crediting the system for allowing Disney to plan for spending and revenue on a daily basis, pointing to the $6.7 billion revenue that the Division of Parks Experiences and Products made in their second quarter. So good for them, not for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. And the CFO also claims that the reservation system is going to allow them to basically boost guest satisfaction allowing them to plan for entertainment where um, yeah show it to me because <laughs> <Where? laughs> my satisfaction Look, has gone down i'm sorry i'm with you i'm completely it's with so you. hard because um, like the number one complaint that they get is the parks are too crowded and it's too expensive and so like if they want to fix that problem like the way to fix the crowding problem is to make it more expensive, but then everyone complains that it's too expensive. But they don't, but much like uh, current housing crises in Florida, you can charge as much as you want as long as people keep coming. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah. And, and so and, that's the thing. There's no amount that they can charge that will stop the parks from being overcrowded. So I feel like they have to do the reservation system to get ahead of the complaints of it just being mobbed. But it doesn't and uns- work. Yeah. It's still crowded. It's like, still it, crowded. So, it's fun, which and, is crazy because it says they they actually limited attendance. Now, it feels I don't know more crowded. True, but it, 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 it feels more crowded. But they only limit attendance before two because after two you can bounce from any park to any park. So, yeah. you know, I mean that's half a day where the parks can be whatever they want to be. Um, and I get that stops like the beginning of the day. But I mean, I just can't stand. I cannot stand these Disney uh, like investor calls or whatever when they say like, "Oh, things are great. We're making so much money." And it's like, "Well, no shit, you're making a bunch of money. Like, you're charging everyone more. It's not like you're doing better. You're just you're just taking more money. Like, because the quality of the parks has gone down. 100%. Like, it is sure. not is not well, as clean as it used to be." Like it is, it's just, it feels like, and no offense, but I know that they've hired a lot of new cast members, but it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel like the parks are clean. It doesn't feel like the merch is good. Like the food is not even hitting the way that it used nope. to. So it's just like, yeah, it doesn't even Which feel like it's that good. Because it's an anniversary. Yeah. Right. So. Not to mention it, we are losing currently uh, an entire generation of uh, industry knowledge and imagineering because none mm-hmm. of them want to come up to Florida. Um, so, so not only is it like they're not hiring enough people period for quality purposes, but we're, <laughs> we're going to feel that we're hiring are not quality. So yeah. And yeah. we're going to feel issues when it comes to that kind of stuff for a decade. So I don't know. This is, these calls always suck. J Peck, you know, he's doing his best to make everything look good because he's actually in legitimate trouble um, for his position. Contract is up in February of next year, by the way. Yeah. I just don't think he's going anywhere. 
I think he's gonna stay. But who would they know. replace him with? I you oh. know what? Iger's not running for president this time around, so if you don't think he could come back, I think you're you're sorely mistaken. I feel like Iger is like true daddy, not tomorrow. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yep. Oh, I, I Sweater daddy. That gray Iger. hair. Yes. I'm sorry. But I, I think I there's a lot of rumors about Tom Staggs, who was almost up for the job, um, and then Iger didn't pick him. Yeah, what happened with that? Yeah, I just, just didn't pick him. I don't know. I don't know how you end up with Bob Chapek. I don't know how you think that's going to work. I just don't. I think Iger recognizes he made a big mistake. And I think Iger would like to salvage his reputation. And if the opening is, let's bring me back on as a salve while I put in somebody new, I think the board would go for it. Um, but we'll find out. Yeah, because like Chapek is like literally a sack of flour. There's not much going on there. No, <laughs> no. personality, like nothing. No. And no. I feel like if you're going to be the CEO of Disney, you yeah. need to be like kind of cool. You got to be at least a sweater daddy is what we've you, learned. At least, like it's not even that hard. It's probably the one thing that the Disney community could like agree on is just the hatred for JPEG. He's just got to go. Yeah, that and cool new effects coming to maybe right vehicles, right, Victoria? <laughs> yeah, so um, a new patent has been filed by Disney for physical and digital effects to be reset on ride vehicles. Um, and this is going to happen between the unload and load stations. So if you're not into Imagineering or anything like that or technical stuff, this is more Dave's thing, so I apologize. The effects would essentially be triggered through the, out the attraction and it would in turn cause physical or digital changes to the ride vehicle so it's gonna look different than when you got on it um based on the patent it looks cool uh, it, it looks like here, discombobulated it, 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 yeah it's like springs that yeah. pop out and right yeah like it looks like roger rabbit stuff yeah yeah i mean that's it, what i was gonna say it looks yeah. like roger rabbit yeah, so you can to get to theorize, you could bang into something on a ride. You wouldn't, but you it would feel like you did, and then something on your ride vehicle would actually. The the Falcon right. has also been used as an example, which is mm -hmm. if you crash in yeah. a little bit, a, a a thing could pop out. I don't I don't get it on these vehicles, like the 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 patent example. Um, like I don't feel like people are aware enough to recognize that their vehicle is slightly adjusting on the outer edges of yeah, their vehicle. Like, yeah. I don't know if the regular guests would care to be honest. Correct. I, I think this is a great concept for like a bumper car system. Like if they wanted to redo <laughs> bumper cars. I mean it's interesting that Disney has never tried to innovate bumper cars. I think that's not intriguing. controlled enough. Well didn't they have something on the lagoon in Disneyland? Like the water version? Oh well, they're at they Tokyo. Got rid of that. Yeah, at Tokyo they have oh, a Tokyo. water, uh, a water-based semi-bumper car system. Oh okay. Yeah, so hmm. maybe that's. I mean, I just don't know where this would be used, but yeah. I think it's cool. We'll see, because similar to like the Spider-Man, you know, animatronic, you know, in Avengers Campus, we had no idea what they were going to use that for. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, and now that thing yeets itself couple times a day wait okay i have a question about that sure do you think there are multiple of them like multiple animatronics that get like thrown and then they just like land in like a pile and then at the end of the night they like reset all of them <laughs> like do you no. know what i mean or is no. it just the same one i'm pretty sure there's one and then like a, a like a replacement <laughs> if they needed it i don't okay. think they just like leave a pile of spider-man because i wasn't sure how it resets because you don't a see it go back you know what do you like call a pile of spider-man <laughs> spidey what's a group of spider-man a know. multiverse yeah <laughs> Because you don't see the reset, right? Like we don't see it go backwards. Like I don't see it flake, like fly the no, other yeah. direction. No, sorry, they don't. <laughs> they don't have to yeet it back across. They just so carry then how it. How does it get yeeted all the way back? Like I've just, <laughs> I've just always been confused. You just put it in a wheelbarrow and take it over. But I just, I just feel like wouldn't that be 
that would leave so many different variables for it to be broken in the transportation back. I mean, so, there, it's not like they're like chucking it down stairwells or something. I mean, it's not that hard to carry a. a I just want to know where it lands. More I have to picture that's how they do it now, though. Like, <laughs> like that's the way they do it in my head. <laughs> I do love the idea of multiple yeeted spider man <laughs> going across throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, they're like, well, let's yeet them all back. And so they just have to yeet That's them back I... across one at a time. Because I was thinking there has to be multiple. Like, there just has to be. So, like, yeah. where do they end up? So I was just confused. Like, I just, like, I want to see where it goes, you know? I mean, they don't do it every five minutes. Like, they have time to reset the dang thing. I think it's Why like every it? hour. I yeah, it's like every, every hour. Yeah. Until like a certain time. There's probably more than one, but I don't think you have like corpses of Spider Men <gasps> laying That's really about. what I was thinking was happening. I just thought that there'd be like a pile, like one lands on like a springboard thing. I don't know, like a web, I guess. And then they just take it and they put it in the pile. Like that's just what <laughs> I was thinking. You know? No, I'm pretty sure they'd take that one back and reset it. Hmm. I don't, not I don't any, think there's... Not anymore. I need to know. Yeah, I know. That's the way they do it in my head now. Yeah, just a pile of <laughs> post-yeeted Spider-Men. Yeah, I know a couple of people in Avengers camp, so I'm going to hit them up. Would you please let us know? We need to know about these yeeted Spider-Men. This I'll is let the you most know. important thing now. <laughs> the next recording, I want to know the answer to this. We yeah. must. Uh, you have to tell uh, us. Uh, <laughs> Someone's bound to know. And if there are corpses of Spider-Men... We must know. This is Seriously, this is now the need, most important thing in my life. I need pictures. I need to know how it works because there's just it just it's not clicking here. You know, like I just I don't know. <laughs> and I need I need answers. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> oh goodness. But uh, Nathan, are you ready to talk about Rescue Rangers? Oh, you want to talk about Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Because today, of course, it was released today. This is Friday. We're taping <laughs> yeah, on Friday. Well, what? So, Victoria and I have had an opportunity to watch it. I'm so excited to hear what you guys think. I can't imagine why. It's going to be very boring. Um, Victoria, why don't you begin with your thoughts on Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Okay. So, um, well, when I watch something, I usually rate it against another movie. And the movie I usually rate it against is uh, The Last of Thunder because that was the worst goddamn movie I ever saw in my life. <laughs> so, that's, a, that's fair. That's a good base of terrible movie. That's a good base, right? Yeah. So it wasn't nowhere as bad as that. But honestly, I thought it was really cute. A little predictable at times. Like there were some sections of the film without giving away too much that like we, me and Nathan um, discussed this off mm -hmm. recording week before we were recording. Like, there were some variables that were a little questionable, but at the same time, some world building issues, yeah, right, world world uh, world building issues. But other than that, I thought the concept was good. A lot of people are comparing it to like a new age Roger Rabbit, which I get because I can totally see it. Uh, otherwise, I thought it was cool. I'm I'm like this is a great example of how to get around copyright laws. <laughs> yeah, it, it, to refresh all your copyright protections on multiple property at once. Yeah, it's the W the WB yeah. method. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But overall, like, I enjoyed it. Like, it gave me a good few chuckles. A lot of the decisions they made were questionable, but otherwise, I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. And you hated it. Well. Nathan's um, on the other spectrum. <laughs> I um, hated this movie with the passions of a thousand sons. Um, but I think that sounds very drastic. So I'm going to go back a little bit and explain such hate. Uh, because I know as of now, it's got like 80 something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. People on Twitter love it. And I'm just this total outlier opinion. So. My reasons for very much disliking this movie are I would not say that it doesn't have its moments of interest, right? They they call they have this thing called the valley, and you think they're talking about 
the valley, you know, but it's the uncanny valley. That's where all the weird um, computerized Polar Express kind of characters live. That's a cool idea. They talk about, you know, CGI is like a plastic surgery. That's kind of a fun idea. Um, they never explore any of these and do anything interesting with them at all. They're all gags. Everything is a gag. And if you take away all of the cameos and all the sort of meta gags, you have a very, very, very basic plot. Um, and and the emotional journeys of... I can't believe I'm talking about the emotional journeys of Chip and Dale. But the emotional journeys of Chip and Dale um, are very, very cliche. And and you, you can tell from a thousand miles away what's going to happen with the mystery, quote-unquote, um, and all of that. So the, the plot's very basic. My main issue, why I really don't like this movie is I, the, the reason I keep hearing it's fun is because, oh, but it's so crazy that Disney used all these properties and went crazy with them and did all these nutty things and they all show up. And it's like, that's not, that's not a reason for a quality movie. It's like my generation saw Shrek and totally forgot what humor was. They just thought like, you know, skateboarding meme lords, like that's all, like that's the joke now. And when you have this movie that literally does a reference to Men's Warehouse, <laughs> so they quote Men's Warehouse, which is, you're gonna like the way you look, right? Uh, and then immediately say that they're quoting Men's Warehouse. Like, it's not like they can't just let the joke lie. They then have to like put a magnifying glass up to it and go, this was a joke. Like, we get it. Oink. And that's, like, so much of this movie. And if you're game for, like, this sort of wacky meme lord, Seth, all of Seth Rogen's animated characters are in the same shot and have the same voice, like, fine. You know, like, I get it. But, like, once you strip all that away, I just don't see anything in this. And it's so soulless. Like, when you – everyone compares it to Frame Roger Rabbit, which is a legitimate film noir – about how Toontown is the uh, black and Latino minority population uh, centers of LA that get literally in history like run over and demolished for the freeway, right? And tunes are in place of the minstrel characters. Uh, and there's all these very dynamic and interesting concepts about culture and the tunes are a, a replacement for something else right and there's commentary um it's saying a lot and it doesn't feel like it's saying a lot and that's why it's genius because mm -hmm. it's actually a film noir about a drunk who lost his brother and is a racist <laughs> um and comes to terms with his racism uh and the loss of his brother um through that process uh and and judge doom is a is li literally a person from a minority passing to then create legislation that hurts his own community right these are big concepts chip and dale is just like what if ugly sonic was in the movie like that's it and i'm not saying that's like bad it's just you can do so much with this world and they do so little that's interesting. If you want to talk about Hollywood industry, if you want to like commentate on, you know, the chain, like they could have done so much about like everything's 3d now. And what happens to all of the hand-drawn animated characters and they have no work? Like, do they live under a bridge? Like what happens? That's interesting. Nothing. They don't do anything with it. Right. It's just, well, some people get CGI plastic surgery. And, and and if I take all that away, I still I still want a, a a rescue Rangers movie. I still want a movie that is about Chip and Dale helping generally in the series they were helping kids or or dealing with issues with fat cat or other issues, right? Um, and you can see them being 3D characters and being in the live action world and doing those things. This movie is not a rescue Rangers movie. It's like a if you've ever seen The Player, Robert Altman's The Player, it's the player for weird Disney characters from the 90s. Like, it's just a strange Hollywood kind of joke movie. Um, so I think I, I really hate it because it doesn't do anything with its potential.
Like if you're going to do something this crazy, do something, say something. And the movie doesn't want to say anything. It just wants to point and go, remember that? And I just don't, that's not enough for me. So that's the most rational version of me throwing my furniture across the the room and, and being very upset by this movie. But um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope it's rational. <laughs> Would you say it's kind of almost like Wreck-It Ralph 2 with 100%. a lot of outdated? A hundred percent. Because the way that you were saying all this, I was just thinking Wreck-It Ralph 2. I gave Wreck-It Ralph uh, to one star. I hated that movie because that movie at best was a commentary about how you have to get likes on Twitter and social media to like make mm -hmm. a difference. Like it's a weird plot. And all the memes and like the little things that they were doing w became outdated in like less than a year. Oh, totally. And that's my thing with this, like, like the, I don't mind ruining cause I didn't like this movie, but like ugly Sonic shows up the Sonic that they didn't use for Sonic. Yeah. Um, and is a, main character like he is a main supporting character yeah, he's a big part of the film he, to be quite honest, which was i was surprised about yeah i feel <laughs> drunk i feel drunk saying the words ugly sonic is a main character in the chip and dale movie like it's the weirdest phrasing in the world like to say that but he is and it's a reference that i'm kind of like who in 10 years is going to remember ugly sonic like i forgot about him until i saw him in that like trailer yeah. So it, it's like it's one of those things where I feel like that joke was thought of at the height of Ugly Sonic mm -hmm. and they're like everyone's going to remember this and it's like it's just not Ugly Sonic is not the same as when in Who Framed Roger Rabbit Betty Boop shows up and it's like you know things have been hard since everything's moved to color like that's a like you may not fully understand who Betty Boop is anymore but you get oh, okay old silent character right they don't explore this idea of like what what does happen to early concepts of you know rendered characters that never get used like they don't go into those details again i don't want to like what you like i suppose and i don't want to like say victoria is dumb for enjoying it i think there's some good jokes i expect better from john mulaney and andy sandberg and uh, and uh the director who did great things like um pop star and never stop never stopping which is one of the funniest satires that's ever been made it's incredible and it's super funny and like this could be a very good satire these these men know satire and and this is just not that so anyway that's enough of me babbling on about chip and dale rescue rangers i liked it i really liked your like view on roger rabbit because like that's why it's one of my favorite like Actually, it is my favorite Disney movie. Yeah, mine too. Like, because of that commentary. And I think a lot of people don't really pick up on it. And I think when it comes to this movie, I think, yeah, there was a lot of expectation for it to say something, to mean something. Um, and I and it's very hard. And there's that weird duality of, like, wanting movies to have a message and to have something behind them that's tangible that you could take from that and think about. And something that kids could kind of think like you could watch it with your kids and sure. see the bigger picture yeah. but there's also you also want those movies that just you could just watch and just yeah. like it can mean nothing but it's kind of it's really hard so i can get i definitely get both perspectives i guess my caveat to that would be any movie that you think is a movie that's just like easy to watch and like you like it and it's easy to watch because it's really good at hiding its message like it yeah it, it does exactly it has a purpose. Well, actually, I don't know if the next topic that we're going to be touching based on well, not based on history is not going to be on Disney Plus, but they have already <laughs> announced what the next Pixar film is going to come after Lightyear, which did anyone realize Lightyear comes out next month? Yeah, I did. I'm so excited for Lightyear. Oh, yeah. So, uh, well, funny that I mentioned Last Airbender. So the next film after that is going to be the one called Elemental. Um, it's going to release on June 16th, 2023. And it's going to basically take place in a city where all the elements um, live together. So fire, water, land, air. And there's going to be a young woman, fire, who is going to connect with a air guy who is very with his life and we'll discover how much they have in common so it sounds like one of those coming of age pixar classics that are going to absolutely destroy us emotionally 
Um, and they also shared the logo and the concept art for the film. I'm so is, tired of attractive. Pixar making me cry. So tired of it. That's why I like light. <laughs> I'm tired of it. I hope it makes I'm you cry. You. I know you do. Make you cry too. <clears throat> you probably will. <laughs> I'm excited. I like Avatar, so oh, this is just going to oh, be a sequel. I just, I'm really interested from, like, one of my best friends is an astrologer, and in an astrology, all of the signs have elements assigned, and mm -hmm. I, like, air and water, or, no, air and fire are, like, two natural attractants, like, air, they just get along in the theory of astrology, so I'm, from that nerdy perspective, that'll be a fun lens to see how that ties in how they connect yeah yeah i do wonder what it'll look like like the final yeah yeah all we characters. see is a sketch it'll be, it'll be pretty for sure yeah for yeah. sure so i'm curious what you guys think so they talk about like monsters inc was to make fur mm -hmm. and moana was to make water do you think this is their fire that's a great question they did they did a lot of fire um there's a little bit of fire in Inside Out, but not a lot. And there's a little, a little bit, bit of fire. Brave, the little wisps. In, yeah, Moana has some oh, fire. Cool. Oh, true. Um, but you're right. I, I, I mean, oh. they're always advancing. Yeah. With these things, so they're finally like, let's just make a movie where we can advance all the elements instead yeah. of one at a time. <laughs> oh, it's hang on a second, you guys. Did you see who the producer is? No. It's produced by the same person who made The Good Dinosaur in Cars 2. Well, Oof. how are we feeling uh, now, folks? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <sighs> um, there went that. Well, The Good, and to be honest, Good Dinosaur had a very, very long production. that They changed director several times. I'm not going to fully blame the director for that one. It was the last person who got attached to it, basically. Okay, yeah, that's so, fair. We'll see there, but I'm not, I'm not loving the pedigree here. That was my son's first movie in the theaters. Like, oh. I have f few larger regrets in parenting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if we're going to be talking about looks, there's a lot of hoopla about the She-Hulk trailer because of the CGI. So um, the She-Hulk trailer came out and gave us a little bit of a peek at what's coming up as far as the MCU on the... I guess riding on the coattails of Multiverse of Madness, and a lot of people are shitting on the CGI, saying it's the worst CGI they ever seen. But clearly, they did not see Multiverse of Madness because that third eye for Doctor Strange was horrendous. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I mean, I love the actress in She Hulk. Um, she was an orphan black, which is a great show. Um, I, I mean, I hope for the best. Um, I, I, I kind of want. I mean kind of want her to crush me she's she's you know we talk a lot about daddies in this podcast she's a mommy <laughs> she's pick me up a mommy. Pick, pick me up and take care of me a little bit so i don't <laughs> normally get those vibes but yeah I'm, I'm feeling a little something so i mean i'm excited about the series so i hope i hope that you know something comes of it um, the, cgi you know don't worry guys they're going to take Ugly She-Hulk, and, and she'll be in uh, the second uh, Rescue Rangers movie. So, <laughs> um, All right, so I guess now we got to stop talking about Disney. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, and I guess, Janine, do you want to tell us about something special in another theme park across the street down the way and over yonder? Yes, I have thoughts. Um, so there is a... <laughs> There's a rumor that um, there's going to be a new coaster coming to uh, Hollywood Studios. No, Universal Studios Hollywood. Sorry, that's I hate that nomenclature there. Um, it's uh, Fast and Furious themed, supposedly. Um, I guess this is Alicia Stella at Orlando Park Shop. I'm, I don't, let, let's see, I don't even know who, I don't know where this is coming from. Uh, they even think that they know who might be making it, which is Intamin, which is a name that I, I can't remember what they've made in the past, but I know they've made something for, for I think, Universal. Lots of things. Intamin's right? yeah, a they've huge done couple. Yeah. A lot yeah. of work. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, pretty exciting. I think it's a better 
investment if they want to put a Fast and Furious IP into the park. It's better to make it a coaster that everyone will want to go on and then Fast and Furious fans will be happy to go on something Fast and Furious instead of the disaster that they put into Universal Studios Orlando. Um, I think it should be pretty cool. They say it's uh, the ride vehicles will look like race cars. They're going to like drift kind of. Um, it sounds pretty neat. I would like to see it. I don't know where they'll put it. I don't like the idea of things going away. They were talking about maybe even replacing the mummy in uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. I don't know. I mean, that I one know. sucks anyway. I mean, yeah, I, I was going to say, was, that one yeah. isn't as popular as the one here. So I think yeah, the, the, the Orlando one is there. better, and that definitely clouds my judgment of that. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think that could be that could be interesting. I like that I like that idea. What about you guys? What do you guys think? Does Universal Studios Hollywood have a coaster? I mean, Mummy. That's it. Yeah. But not an outdoor real coaster. The one that's in, uh, but it's a kid coaster. The one that's in um, Harry Potter Land. Oh, Fly the Hippogriff? Oh, they have that. Yeah. But it's like a kiddie one. But there's not like an actual roller coaster. But for me... I think the only way that I would get excited about this, if, if it's like um, West Coast Racers, that ride mm. that opened up in Six Flags, the dueling coaster with the two cars. Have you guys seen that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, those are cool. Oh, if it's like that, because that's my favorite coaster at Six Flags. If it's like that one, where it's like two cars racing and then they have like something um so like some cool feature i think it would be good but i just feel like anything fast and the furious just trash get rid of it like let's do something new i just can't stand it i i hate it i it hurts hate it, my but ears. I, I like an ip the, the franchise or the ride um uh, both <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna still watch the movies but like i mean it's something to do but like i just think because here in in hollywood we don't have the ride like you guys we have it in our studio tour right yeah and it's oh, and that's it's just yes. but it makes a heck of a lot more sense there it does <laughs> yeah but it just it's horrible it's yeah. so outdated it looks bad it, it's so loud and just horrible so right i don't know well and i don't think this is a spoiler but as someone who's ridden cosmic rewind which is a, a coaster that has rotation ability right in the individual cars mm-hmm. um the idea that this is a drifting kind of coaster and the they will drift um that could be fun and it doesn't take a lot of space because you can make those tight turns and have the cars drift um so the idea of having some sort of drift oriented tight space coaster has a has a very universal hollywood vibe there's not a lot of space yeah. to do anything big I agree. So, um, in that way, like Cosmic Rewind is kind of a big vertical building. Um, and if that's kind of, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but if they're going for more of uh, the vibe, you're getting a lot out of the drift opposed to like the length. Um, you know, you can do a lot with that. So who knows? Yeah. I, I, I think that's something to watch. Um, speaking of, uh, also in the universal world, um, I'm pretty, I'm, this is, this is a bummer. I'm sure it's for a good reason, but they are closing the Classic Monsters Cafe at uh, Universal Studios Florida. It's already closed. Um, it's closed. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was like, I, I follow uh, Vegan Universal or something like that on Instagram and they posted some about some delicious meal that they got at this place and then the next day they had to be like hey actually um yeah we i know we said that this is good don't you can't go there anymore so never mind um i had actually never it's wild i think it's a i really love those ips Mm -hmm. i love that i guess they're making room for epic universe and like we don't need it we're gonna put in a whole like monsters right you know land so we can do better um, I think that's probably that's the, probably the math. I, I'm curious what's going to go in there. If it's like minions or Jimmy Fallon, it's, I will riot. It's, it's going to be minions. <laughs> it's going to be minions. Oh yeah. my God. Because, yeah, because 
the Shrek 4D building is is a new Minions ride. If they put in a third Minions attraction slash restaurant, you know, something. It's just a restaurant. I mean, regardless, having two rides and a restaurant that's all Minions is like, and right at the entrance, it's like, wait a minute, are we just all living in Minion Park? One would say it's a land. Yeah, yeah. it would be and Minion Land. I think land. it will be. I think that it's super strange. It's because of park structure that it's all in the front. Yeah. And that's your entrance. And that's really strange. Real weird. Kind of guess what? Having Despicable Me and, and Shrek 4D be your entrance already was really strange. Like they don't that's have valid. a strip. They don't have a main street. Yeah. Um, they do on the side. That's what's so weird. Yeah. Uh, is is <laughs> everything gets themed after you get past those buildings. Yeah. Um, and and they're just kind of leaning in on the Hollywood Studios vibe. So like, I don't know if that's. If that's just what they're gonna do, like, fine, I guess. There's always gonna be minions at Universal now. It's just the way it's gonna be for the next hundred years. <laughs> no way around uh, it. Yeah. Monsters Cafe. I'm just, I R. just R. wanna know why they closed it so suddenly. Yeah, that, I, I, that's the part that's weird to me. Well, everything feels sudden for us, but they probably knew this was happening a long time. Well, no, um, th I mean, that's the point. Like, why didn't they tell, like, you know, I don't know. Why don't they announce it? Because usually they give a date. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think that... But they gave a date about Shrek. Like the temporary Shrek yeah. thing. Yeah. I think it could be... Place. I think it could be as simple as they needed to order more food. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like, <laughs> yeah. you can close... If you're going to close something down, you don't want a bunch of food to rot. Yeah. And it could be very specific to that spot. And they're oh. just like, well... Yeah. Close it now or close it. it in three months. You know, like, what are we going to yeah. do? So I don't know. That's just me spitballing. But yeah, RIP. I will love. I always love those director's chairs that were all themed per uh, monster. Those were great. There's some great stuff in there. And I bet you a ton of that material is going to be reused in tribute stores. Uh, yeah. It looks yeah. like a tribute store. Yeah. And we already know that Halloween Horror Nights, Horror Nights has a classic monsters attraction. Uh, house this year so i bet you some stuff might yeah. get used for some purposes um from there so that's cool but uh yeah that is everything for this we had a jam-packed episode today my goodness yeah. so rat castle is produced by nathan hart oh uh, nathan hartman please consider subscribing so you don't miss an episode and tell all your friends you can check out our website at ratcastlepodcast.podbean.com. And please feel inclined to send us questions at bit.ly forward slash ratcastle. Now grab your belongings and please exit to the left. Will you stop this foolishness? What foolishness would you like to see? Will you get out of here? <laughs>